In the Greek epic, The Odyssey, there's a point in the story where Odysseus and his men are warned about the sirens. The sirens are these creatures that will play beautiful music and song to lure sailors in and ultimately destroy them. Aware of this, Odysseus and his men prepare in advance. Most of the men plug their ears so they won't be able to hear the music. Odysseus has his men tie him to the main mast of the ship. As they're going by, the sirens music starts playing and Odysseus is overwhelmed. He, he becomes attracted to it and he tries to undo the bindings so he can jump overboard. The men see this and they quickly come over to tighten the ropes so Odysseus can't break free. The men are able to travel by the sirens without incident because they prepared in advance. I, I find this ancient classic very relatable to life today because there are a lot of things in my life that I want to do, but when I think about it, should I do it? If I'm up late at night and I'm feeling hungry, I may want to go to Steak and Shake and get a burger, but should I, knowing how that'll impact my health? A few days ago, there was a snowstorm that came through Illinois, and there was a part of me that said, I want to dust off my old Xbox and play video games, but should I, knowing I have a talk on Saturday I need to prep for, and there's content I need to work on for next week. If I play the video games, I may not be ready for my talk on Saturday, I may end up getting behind on putting out content next week. So there's this conflict between what we want to do not always being what's in our best interest, and what we should do being something that we may not want to do. My managing partner at Northwestern Mutual, he had this phrase that far too often we have uphill dreams but downhill habits. The things that we want to do are very often the very downhill habits that are taking us away from our dream, away from our goals, away from the best version of ourselves. It's important for us to realize if we want to accomplish our dreams, we need to focus more on what we should do instead of what we want to do. But that can be challenging. So first, with the things we want to do, it's important for us to set boundaries in place. If there are habits in your life or issues you're dealing with that you know are holding you back from being your best, set some kind of boundary around it. Just like Odysseus and his men set a boundary so that they would not hear the song of the sirens and fall prey to it. For example, maybe you feel like you are wasting time on YouTube or social media. If that's the case, why don't you try for a week only accessing the internet from a public location like a Starbucks or a library? It may be difficult, it may not be easy to put the laptop away and put the phone away at home, but if you do that, you're putting a boundary in place so you can be more productive, get your work done, and you may find you can do even more work throughout the day. So whatever the things are you want to do, but you know you shouldn't, put boundaries in place so you can say no. Now, on the other hand, there are things you should do, but you may not want to do them. In that case, there are two things to help with this. First, find an accountability partner, and second, make it a challenge. Number one, accountability partner. When you have somebody who supports you and is with you in the fight, you will be able to push yourself much further than you could on your own. Olympian Adam Goucher, he recalls a story when he was in college, him and his roommate Tim, they had this great idea to ride bikes from Boulder, Colorado to Fort Collins where Tim's parents lived. The ride would be about 50 miles and neither Adam or Tim had been on a bike in several years. Adam dusted off his bike from high school, Tim bummed a bike from a friend's because he didn't have one of his own, and they set off on their adventure. As you can imagine, it was very uncomfortable, but after three and a half hours, they were able to make it to Fort Collins. At that point, Tim turned to Adam and said, you want to know what we'd do if we were real men? And Adam replied, if we were real men, we would ride back to Boulder in under three hours or we would do the entire thing over again. They stayed the night at the parents' house. In the morning, Tim and Adam woke up. Even though they were sore, they set out on their journey. And they made it back to Boulder faster than they had made the trip to Fort Collins the day before. In two days, they had gone 100 miles without having touched a bike in years because they had each other. Find somebody to be that accountability partner with you on the journey and you will be able to go much further even when you don't want to do something. I imagine if Adam and Tim had done it on their own, at some point they would have quit. But because they were together, even though they may not have felt like doing it, they were able to get through it because they had each other. Number two, make it a challenge. When you should do something but don't want to, instead of focusing on how uncomfortable it will be, focus on how this is an opportunity for you to prove how badly you want to reach your goal and how tough you are. After graduating college, Adam's roommate Tim became a high school coach. 
There was one workout Tim would do every year of his athletes. He would have them in a grass field next to the high school and they would do timed repeats. With each repeat, the goal was to cover more distance than they had with the one before. One year when Tim had scheduled this workout, there was a blizzard that came through the city. And as Tim came to give instructions to his team, he could tell that they were not excited about going out into the weather and running in the snow and in the cold. But Tim turns the workout into a challenge. He gave the speech to his athletes that they had a choice. They could let nature be tougher than them, or they could prove that they were tougher than nature. And he could see how he was, he was capturing their imagination, how their eyes were lighting up. And now they were thinking more about the challenge than about how much it would hurt. And they were excited to go out and compete out there. And Tim doubled down and he said, I only expect the top guys to do six repeats. But if anyone here desires to do all six, I will let you do the last one shirtless. That may seem like a crazy incentive, but it got the kids motivated. And for the first time in five years, every single one of Tim's athletes did all six repeats. By repeat number six, all of Tim's athletes had thrown off their shirt and were going into the final loop with reckless abandon. As they were doing this, everyone at the high school was up against the windows watching this going on because they couldn't believe what their classmates were doing. When you turn something you don't want to do into a challenge, it motivates you to prove how tough you are to yourself and to everybody around them. So if you have habits that you want to do but know you shouldn't, put boundaries in place. Just like Odysseus and his men put boundaries in place so they would not fall prey to the sirens. And the things you should do, but you don't really want to do them. First, find an accountability partner, just like Adam had Tim. And secondly, make it a challenge, just as Tim made that workout a challenge for his athletes. And by doing that, we will turn our downhill habits into uphill habits that are heading towards our dreams.